guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first video of 2021. Happy New Year, I hope you had a great New Year, as good as it could be in whatever situation you're in and I'm sending you loads of love from Iceland. If you're new to this channel, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell notification button so you don't miss out on any of the content that's coming up. Today I'm sharing with you my 2021 goals for the year. I have five goals that are personal and five goals that are business. I'm pulling up my laptop because there's no way I'm gonna remember all this information. We'll start off with personal. The first one is love yourself. Now granted, I have probably put this in my New Year's resolutions and my goals for years now, but I think that it's even harder now that I'm a mother to put myself first and actually do some self-care and have it as part of my routine. Not necessarily a daily routine, but somewhere in the week <laughs> and at least the month, actually spend some time looking after myself, looking after my mind and just kind of trying to breathe, take a little step back, just enjoy life and not be running around with a busy schedule, running a business and juggling my family as well. I think the reason that I've probably not met these goals before is because there's no accountability. There's nothing measuring if I'm succeeding in it or not. And so this year I've actually put in a bit more detail to help myself and every quarter I'm gonna reflect back on these goals and then I'll be able to see if I'm achieving them and I can kind of tweak what I'm doing, my plans and the work to achieve those goals. I am worth it because we all are. I will spoil myself more and allow myself treats. Too often I keep things for good, which is so true. I have drawers full of beautiful products and candles that I have been gifted that I just, I say for good and good is now. <laughs> just use them, Sonia, treat yourself. I will enjoy nice products. I will reward myself and celebrate the wins no matter how small and I will invest in myself. Number two is baby. Now I am not pregnant at the moment, don't get excited, but I hope, dream and pray that we will have the opportunity to have another baby. And I'm putting that out there, which is obviously something that you know society says not to do. It's a sensitive subject, but I am a great believer that if you put something out into the universe, the universe will reward you. And it's not gonna be as simple as that. Me saying we want to have another baby doesn't mean that I'm gonna fall pregnant. <laughs> there is a lot that goes into it, a lot of luck, a lot of um, looking at the month and my cycle and tracking things and a lot of timing goes into it and a lot of trying to not be stressed and enjoy the process. I'm doing lots of things like trying to envision myself growing a bump, growing a baby, Mia having a brother or sister and just get my mind prepared for it as much as I can do, but also being aware that maybe it might not happen. We're very, very lucky with Mia and this time round, it's been a few months that we've been trying with no success right now. So we're gonna keep trying. I will continue to track my cycle and take my vitamins. So I am taking prenatal vitamins right now because that's what will help my body prepare for a baby. I will work on my mindset and mindfulness, which also goes with number one, self-care, loving myself. I will stay calm, rest, which is very difficult for me. Get a good night's sleep, which I'm really trying to be in bed by 10 o'clock every single night. Mia still wakes at about six in the morning, so I want to get a really good night's sleep. Eat well, which is something that I, I have been working on a lot last year and will continue this year, cooking good, wholesome meals at home and feeding the freezer. Exercise by going on daily walks and weekly swims. Now here in Iceland, at the moment, the weather is just utterly horrible. You don't wanna go outside. So going for a daily walk is difficult, but I walk Mia to nursery or walk her back home if I'm picking her up. So I am getting out of the house and all I need to do is do a little bit of a detour to make that a good 
half an hour, 45 minute walk and go to the playground or something with her. And that gets me out of the house, gets me fresh air, gets me some vitamin D and daylight. And it's, it's fun for her as well. And it's nice just to spend that time together outside and just take in some fresh air. Weekly swims, I love going swimming. We swim outdoors here in Iceland, so um, in heated pools. <laughs> We've got hot tubs and everything. It is great that the pools are open and they've been open for a month now, so I have been going for my swims. I haven't done one this week, but it's only Wednesday, so I'll aim for that tomorrow. Number three is a tidy space, tidy mind. Now, this is something that I have probably believed in most of my life and I'm very much a, an organized tidy person. I like to have everything in its home, in its place. So I have written make home a sanctuary. I work from home so it can be tough. Keeping my space tidy helps me stay motivated and productive. A tidy space is a good backdrop for YouTube and Instagram as well. I just had to pick up a few things this morning and then my backdrop is nice and tidy. The rest of the room is really organized as well. So we do still have the Christmas tree up, but it's dark outside. So I'm, we're okay with not having decorations on it and just having the fairy lights because it adds to the cheery vibe of the homes. Number four is journal. This is my journal from last year. I tried to do a bullet journal which is I spent probably a day and a half setting it up at the start of January last year and it really didn't work for me. That process is really fun when you have the time to actually be working with it or have gotten used to it but it just didn't work for me and this year we have the family planner in the kitchen where we have a column for everybody and birthdays are all tracked in there. For myself, I've got a weekly diary now and so I'm planning out blog and YouTube content on that. Everything else we use iCalendar, so iCal. Ingemar and I have joined it together so that we can see each other's diaries and it means that I know what I'm what's coming up and what he's not told me about um, and then I can put it in the family calendar if needed. So I bought the five minute journal which is now a sold out journal, it's a very successful process of journaling. Five minutes you spend a couple of minutes in the morning, a couple of minutes in the evening and you write down kind of like your goals for the day but they're in questions so it's three amazing things that I want to, to do today or want to happen today an affirmation for the day, what would make today great, and then in the evening at night time you write three amazing things that did happen today, and then you write something in a positive tone that would have helped today or made it better. And so far I've been doing it for 10, 12 days, and I have managed to do it every single morning, which when Mia comes in at six o'clock in the morning and wants you to jump and dance, um, it is quite difficult to do, but I have been finding a way and I don't do it straight away, but I do it as soon as I possibly can in the morning. And I, I do it as the last thing before I turn off the light and go to sleep. So I have written, I will journal every morning and night in the five minute journal for at least six months. Now, I've set an end goal there so that I'm giving myself kind of two quarters of the year so I can check back halfway through. Am I still keeping up with it? Has it worked for me? Have I benefited from this process? Is there something else I want to try? And I think it's a good way of investing your time and just reflecting half the year, did it work? Do I want to continue with this process? Number five is meditate and tapping. Now, don't roll your eyes. I know lots of people are talking about this. Meditating is something that I have never really done that much of until I got a Headspace app and then I moved to the Calm app. There are free stories on it that I use as kind of nap time or quiet time where I just uh, sit in a comfy sofa <laughs> or I lie on the bed and just close my eyes, listen to the story or listen to one of their meditations on there and I just kind of relax for a little bit of time. I think of it like Mia is napping right now, mummy needs to rest right now, and I try to do it like that. I don't do it every single day, I just do it when I've remembered or when I feel like I just, my brain needs a little bit of quieting. 
Tapping is also something that I've gotten into over the last year really and it's something that helps me when I start getting headaches it really does divert the, the, the messages to my brain that I'm in pain and it can confuse them so it does actually relieve some of the pain and maybe just confuses my brain which can be easily done. Um, <laughs> when I feel stressed or need to be more mindful I will either tap or meditate. This is still a new thing for me but I will go easy on myself and try when I can. So again, I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. I've listed it in here, it is important to me. I've suggested two different methods there, but I'm not putting pressure on myself. Okay, onto the business goals. So we have five business goals. The first one is website. And I've written, I will work hard to level up my blog by creating a new blog post every week. Now this is probably one of the biggest goals that I'm setting for myself, a new blog post every single week. And I've already sat down and written out 52 ideas which flowed from my brain so easily. So I obviously have it in me and I really want to achieve this goal. So if you're watching this back, Sonia, kick yourself if you haven't. I will pin these to Pinterest. For those of you who don't know, and I can do a separate video on this, Pinterest is a visual search platform really, and it's a great way for content creators to get their information, their blog posts, their videos out there. I will share more of my experience and knowledge to help others grow. Now this is my main aim through my website and hopefully through my YouTube channel as well. I feel like I have a lot of experience and stories to tell and to share and although some of that might not be knowledge or an experience that you're interested in, hopefully it will help you learn a bit more about me and what I have to offer and in doing that I will gain a bit more confidence to keep sharing and keep opening up. I've also put in this that these will have a CTA which is call to action to help grow my email list and push my products and services. Now I don't mean push as in salesy, I just mean as in a funnel to get awareness to whoever's on my email list that I have products, that I have services on offer and they will help those people who a problem, we can solve them, I can educate you, I can train you on these certain things. Number two is courses. So at the moment I have two courses through Skillshare. The first one is portfolio preparation for art and design students. The second one is how to draw a floor plan. So I've put down, I want to create a drawing class by March, a rendering class by June, and a model making class by September. Now, this is quite a lot of work. I have given myself a couple of months for each one of them to write the content, film it, create it, edit it, upload it, and then add any other resources to those classes. At the moment, these courses are, I'm kind of planning to have them on Skillshare. In the longer term, which I want to also create five year goals, there'll be separate courses that are just through my website, so off of Skillshare. At the moment, Skillshare is a great platform because there's already a massive audience there, so it's a very easy way for me to educate and to gain students. The third one is shop, and for those of you who don't know, I have a shop on my website, but I'm also on Etsy. So I've written down that I will work on my SEO, which is search engine optimization, keyword research, and we'll pin all products to Pinterest. Pinterest works just like a search engine, so if someone is looking for Icelandic artwork, they'll type it in and my pins will come up, they'll click on it and it'll go to my shop or into a blog post where I will have linked my products. So working on my SEO and my keyword research will help optimize my website, my shop, and will bring more customers to my products. Number four, YouTube. I have written, I will work on my SEO and keywords, just like I was talking about there, and boost my titles and descriptions. I will change some video thumbnails. The back end of YouTube is where you can kind of add tags, keywords, edit your titles, create thumbnails. You can edit those thumbnails and add new thumbnails. You can work on your description. You can add links into that description and so on. 
some of my videos which are more popular they have old links in them and they're not fully optimized for the most amount of views they can be getting there's a lot of work that goes into that and I really need to start focusing on it I will film edit and upload more videos sharing my experience knowledge and educating others on to help them grow so all of these things I'm talking about like Etsy, my website, videos, um, SEO, keywords, all of these different things. I have educated myself on how to do this and how to build a channel, build a following, build an email list. That is one part of my knowledge and experience. But what I'm kind of talking about here is what I feel like I haven't really opened up and shared with everyone is my journey and what I have done and overcome to kind of get to this point in my life where I'm a chartered architect, I teach online, I have a family, I live in a, a country that's wildly <laughs> exciting. I have lived in two other countries than my home country. Um, expat life is kind of just the norm for me. All of these different things, I feel like there there's so much I could be talking about and sharing with you that hopefully is of interest and by putting these goals in here and detailing this out, I'm hoping to create more accountability so that you guys can push me as well as myself. I will hit 5,000 subscribers by 2022. Hopefully, I will have done that and surpassed it because I've worked on all of the back end, the keyword research, SEO, and will be sharing more and educating more on this channel. Fingers crossed that we hit that goal. And then last but not least, number five is social media. And I will create content which covers more about my why and my purpose in my business. So my why is why I'm doing this. Why have I built or am building this business, this kind of online empire, or whatever you want to refer to it as. Uh, my purpose is to, to help you guys, to help creative entrepreneurs grow just like I am growing and create videos, create blog posts, create digital products, phys physical products, create a life that they love. And I know that lots of entrepreneurs talk like that and it sounds amazing and wouldn't it be great, but it is great because I'm already doing it and although I might not have huge numbers, I have a pretty good income from what I'm doing already and last year was a tough year for lots of people including us but in my business it was my best year yet and that's just amazing because a lot of that was run on passive income and I have numerous different streams of income and that's something that I would like to share and and help you guys create if that's something you want to do as well. I've also put I will make content under my categories and include reels and IGTVs. Now Instagram is something that I've probably just I've spent way too long on. Not probably, I know I have and this year I actually want to take a step back from it because I want to focus more on creating videos and blog posts and Instagram will hopefully kind of grow as a result of that. I will remove ghost followers and I will hit 5k followers. At the end of 2020, I was quite close to 5k, but actually when I looked through my followers, I took a couple of days to just go through them and start removing some ghost followers. And ghost followers are, accounts that you've maybe you've held a giveaway and so people have followed you from accounts that are no longer there or they're there are fake accounts or they don't post on it so they're not really real people to interact with and although it looks good to have what do they call it vanity metrics you know if you have 5k followers yeah that's great 10k obviously you get swipe up 100k whatever it looks great to have big numbers but i am much more interested in creating a real community and having conversations with you guys and actually just having real people see us and our family and our instagram is much more about our family life 
than what I'm doing personally and in my business. And so I want to be very careful about who it is that's following us and who's seeing our life, especially Mia's life. And so I've gone through my followers and I have slowly over the last few weeks, I've removed hundreds of people that either were ghost followers, not real accounts, not real people, or were just a strange kind of account to be following our family account anyway. So I've been very careful about who our audience is on Instagram and I'm gonna take a bit of a, a sidestep from Instagram for now. So there we go, that's my 10 goals for 2021. I hope that you've really enjoyed this video and it's encouraged you to also write your goals and think about how you're gonna be held accountable for them. I'm gonna be checking back on my goals and my process to hit them every quarter so that I can kind of refine and tweak what I'm doing along the way. Make sure to use the comments down below to share some of your goals or ask questions about my goals as well and we can have a conversation down there. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit that bell button because it helps in the algorithm of YouTube but also to grow my channel and you will get a notification of any new content that's coming your way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video soon. Happy New Year guys. Bye.